In this video, we'll talk about some important properties of complex numbers going to be useful when dealing with second order equations. Our second order equation, we're trying to solve them, assuming they have constant coefficients, all results in a quadratic polynomial. We end up with something like an a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero, and you can solve for r. Now, if we have b squared minus 4ac is negative, this results in two complex roots. So to be able to handle these sorts of situations, we need to know how to deal with complex numbers. What are some basic properties that we need of complex numbers? So in general, a complex number is something of the form z equals x plus i times y, where i here is the imaginary unit or is the square root of negative one. For this complex number, we would have that the real part of z is the part that does not have the i in front of it, that's x, and the imaginary part of z is the part with the i, so that's y. In addition, we can do basic operations on complex numbers. If I want to add two numbers, say a plus i b adding to c plus i d, I would just add component by component. I add the two real parts to get a plus c as the real part of the next complex number, plus i times b plus d to get the imaginary part. I can also subtract, and that results in just subtracting each component in the same way as well. Multiplying can be a little trickier. Multiplying, we just treat these like polynomials and FOIL things out. So a plus i b times c plus i d. We're just gonna FOIL this out. a c plus i b c plus i a d plus i squared b d. An important thing here is i squared is minus one because i is the square root of minus one. Then I can recombine terms to get a c minus b d, because that's a minus one from there, plus i times a d plus b c, and that is the product of two complex numbers. For division, we have to be more careful again. What we really need to think about division is reciprocals, because I want to multiply two complex numbers, I want to multiply one by one over the other one. And for complex numbers, division is tricky because I need to write one over a plus i b in terms of something plus i times something. And we do that multiplying by the conjugate. So multiply by the conjugate, I can multiply by a minus i b on the top, a minus i b on the bottom. The top becomes a minus i b. The bottom becomes a squared plus b squared because it's different than two squares, but the two i's give me a minus one. And so this is, as a complex number, a over a squared plus b squared minus i times b over a squared plus b squared. And now we can use multiplication to then get division of two complex numbers as well. This thing here was the complex conjugate. So a plus i b with a bar over the top is complex conjugation, a minus i b. We also have the modulus of a complex number which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So there is the basic operation on complex numbers, but there is one other complex thing we need for this development here, and that's Euler's formula. So what we're really gonna wanna do is we're gonna find these complex roots. So we're gonna have our r in this character's equation solution be something like a plus i b. And I wanna write e to the r t. Well, I can write that, that's fine. E a plus i b times t, which is e to the a t plus i b t, and that's e to the a t times e to the i b t. This part here is fine, I can deal with that. What about this e to the i b t business? That's where Euler's formula comes into play. And Euler's formula says that e to the i x for any x is equal to cosine of x plus i sine of x. And this can be proved using Taylor series. Let's you know what the series for each individual part here is, e to the x, cosine, and sine, and you can rearrange terms to get to this fact with the fact that i squared is minus 1. But that lets us handle this last part over here. So it tells us then that e to the rt is going to be something like e to the a t times cosine of b t plus i sine of b t. So theoretically, 
This will get us a solution to the problem we're trying to solve. It might be the most useful solution that we'll see later, but it does give us a solution that we could plug in and would get us an answer and a function that will solve the second order consequent coefficient linear differential equation where you have complex roots to the character's equation.